darkness in What? Case. Your eyes will adjust. Oh, oh okay. we just wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can use your other senses. Yes. Smell. Oh, who didn't put <laughs> on deodorant? Seriously. No, no. Oh. Okay. Like what was it? We can listen. We can listen for things. Do you hear anything? Candle. Candle. What? Candle. There's a candle. Why? Let's just crazy. skip ahead in the script. There's a candle. Yeah. Yes. I know. I am so glad that 
boss and heard us. It's a good thing. That I was just a little it. scared, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah. What? I know, I know, my hat got all messed up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. What? Being heard when you're scared. Oh. oh someone oh. responding when you call out. You know what? You know what? That reminds me. That reminds me. That reminds me. That reminds me. accepted Christ into their hearts and now they can become their journey of walking through this life with you and your Holy Spirit to help them. And Lord, I thank you that we had the privilege of teaching each day these children truths that they needed to know. And Lord, I pray right now you'll be with the children. Help them to sit still. Help them to open their ears and their hearts and their minds because you've got something for them today as well. Lord, I pray you fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the words I need for this lesson today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, boys and girls, it's a very good lesson today, as always, because in the Bible, usually there's nothing there that God did not plan and did not have a lesson that he wanted you to know. And in our lesson today, we're going to be in the book of Samuel once again. And we are going to be looking at King Saul and David. But before we start, let's just review just a minute so that you can remember who these people are. Remember that King Saul was the first king of Israel... And Samuel anointed him with oil as God had told him to so that King Saul became the first king of Israel. And King Saul at first was a very good king and did what was right in the sight of God. But as Saul got older, boys and girls, he began to see his position and the power that he had and he began to think that maybe he was in charge and he could tell people what to do and God was just there but he didn't really consult him. He started moving away from God to the point he started worshiping false idols and bringing them into his home. It was a horrible thing to do. But Saul moved away. And you remember Samuel was told by God, you go to Saul and you tell him that the kingdom's going to be ripped from him because he has been rebellious and disobedient. And Samuel did just that. So Saul knew that he was going down as the king of Israel. Now, you also remember that Samuel went to the home of Jesse. And out of the eight sons, he found one son that God had chosen to be king of Israel. And that boy's name was David. And as David grew up, he served Saul in Saul's palace. And he had great respect for Saul as God's chosen. But when Saul found out that David was the one that was going to be the future king, Saul decided that he would have to kill David because Saul wanted to stay king. Now, the thing about it was that Saul had a great army, thousands of men. And one of the things that happened while Saul was in charge was there were a group of prophets living in this town. And David came through with his man through this town 
and he consulted with the prophets there as he usually did and they told him what God wanted him to do so David took conference with them and then he went on his way well when Saul found out that David had gone through this town and the prophets had helped him Saul was enraged so he came to this town where all these prophets were and he said to them why would you not tell me that David was in your towns? Why did you not tell me? He said, you know what? Because you have helped David, and because you did not tell me where he was going, we're going to kill all of you. So he said to his men, I want you to kill all the prophets in this town. Saul's so men said, Lord, no. We cannot kill the prophets of God. But there was one man, boys and girls, who was an Edomite, which God had told Saul to wipe out. But this one Edomite said, I'll do it, because he was a heathen man. And he killed 85 prophets. One prophet escaped. One prophet. So now Saul's men went on their way, and what an evil thing in the eyes of God and man for Saul to have killed God's priests. But this is why everybody feared Saul. He had lost his mind. He could do anything. So David and his men were hiding in a cave. There were only 400 of them. And in that cave, while he was trying to hide and spare his life, he discovered that there was this little town. And this great army of Philistines were going to come and take over that town and take all their cattle and sheep and people from the town. And they were crying out for help to Saul, but Saul didn't have time for them. So it fell to David. And David thought, I need to help these, this poor town of people, but what shall I do? So he prayed to God, and he said, God, shall I go to this town and help these people? And God said, yes, you will. And so he went to his men and he said, men, God has told us to go to this town and to rescue them from, from the army of the Philistines. But the men were scared. They said, well, what? there's only 400 of us. How could we possibly go up against the Philistines? So David said, okay, hold that just a minute. I'll go back to God. So he went back to God and he asked God, God, do you really want me to go up against the Philistines? And God said, I will deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went back and said, let's go, men. We're going to strike down the Philistines. So they waged a war against the Philistines. They went throughout their camp, and everywhere they went, they chased and slaughtered the Philistines. And there were thousands of Philistines. But God, even with just a small group of men, were able to defeat the Philistine army. And they delivered this little town from the Philistines. Now I'm sure that everybody in that town was grateful to David and his army for freeing them from the Philistines. Except Saul got news that David had gone to this town and he fought the Philistines. So now he said to his men, David is in that town. He said, now listen to what Saul said. God has delivered David into my hands. That's how bad Saul was. He, he didn't even listen to God's voice. Because in this city there was one way in and one way out. There was just a gate. So Saul thought, we got it made. Well then David heard about Saul coming on the edge of the town to take it over and to take him captive. And he said to the one prophet that had escaped with the ephod, which was a garment that the priest wore, he said to him, I've got to pray and ask God what to do. 
So David bowed down before God. He said, we must ask God and get his view of this. So he said, God, is, call, is Saul really coming to this town to take me prisoner and to kill me? God said, he is. And then he said, God, will these people from this city hand us over to Saul and his army? And God said, they will. He said, flee from the city. Go out into the hills all around and hide yourself. So David and his men went out to the hillside and hid themselves. Now Saul and his army knew nothing of this. So when they got to the town to try to search for David and his army, the, the people there said, well, they've run away. They've run away out to the hillside. So Saul said, I missed him again. So he said, let's go back out of this town because David is not here. But Saul thought, but there is another day. We will get David another day. And boys and girls, because David left that town, the town was spared. And David was spared because David listened to God's voice when God spoke to him. And because David, remember, God chose David because David had a heart for God. And you remember the Spirit of God was taken from Saul, and the Spirit of God was put on David. So David, all the days of his life, except he did take a side road every now and then, stayed faithful to God. Now how could David not have vengeance against Saul? It was because David's heart was turned to God and he knew that Saul, God had appointed to be the leader. And at the right time, boys and girls, David would become the king of Israel. But it was in God's time, not David's time. And David knew that. So David was faithful to God from then on until Saul was killed in battle. And then David did become the king and he ruled well, he ruled well in Israel rest of his days. And he began to write the Psalms when he was a little boy out on the hillside watching those sheep. And one of his Psalms applies to what David went through as a young adult. It was Psalm 86. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Listen closely to my prayer, O oh Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I'm in trouble, and you will answer me. So David knew what we need to know. When we're a child of God, the Spirit of God is inside of us. If we're ever in trouble, we just have to call out to God and God will give us what we need to get through the situation we're in, no matter what it is. So you're going to go to your small groups and you're going to learn more about David and Saul.